Teddy Covers. What a show this is on Wednesday morning. Teddy Covers coming to us live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Teddy Covers, how are you doing on this Wednesday morning, my man? I'm doing great. Love to see you in the hockey garb, buddy. You ready for hockey season? Oh, I'm pumped. I'm uh I'm extremely pumped, man. I got my NHL package ready to go, and uh, I will be watching hockey nonstop for the next seven or eight months. And uh, we've had very, very successful years here on the show. Hit uh, Two years ago, my first year down here, we hit a high watermark of plus 43 units. Uh, I got hurt in the playoffs and ended up about 27 units up uh, in the season, and my futures took me back. And then last year, we hit a high watermark of plus 32 units in the last day of the season, and then... Uh, did not my futures were bad i lost 10 and a half units in futures so i ended up a uh, plus 24 i don't have it in front of me but i believe plus 24 units so we've been very successful in nhl and it helps because i can't say that about every sport so it helps very very <laughs> much uh teddy covers giant wild card game tonight rays a's morton Manaya. everybody wants to know if you've got a move on it do you have a play so I haven't bet the game. If I was going to bet the game, I would have to take the plus price with Tampa because this grades out pretty close to a pick to me. Uh, and it really does. And I anticipate a game a lot like we saw last night where, you know, one key hit or one key error or one key pitch or one key at bet is going to make all the difference between winning and losing. And in those type of games, I'm not excited about laying a price with the favorite. So, I mean, Oakland deserves to be favored. Manet at home, obviously, is dynamite. Um, but... You know, uh, the A's have what the fourth best home record. The Rays of the or A's of the yeah the fourth best home record. The Rays have the second best road record. Morton's a pitcher that I trust in these spots. Uh, Tampa's bullpen's been there all year. Uh, I, I think Tampa's a live dog tonight. Uh, and again, in a pick 'em game, if you're getting a plus price, not even from a coin flip, someone's going to give you you know the, the eleven every time you bet ten uh, on a coin flip, you'll do it forever. Uh, that's the way I look at tonight's game. I'm getting a plus price in a, in an even game, so I could only look at the Tampa side. I get it. Morton's last five starts on the road, he had a 7.52 ERA, but he's been exceptional against the A's this year. He has postseason experience, but he hasn't fared that well, although he was on the mound when they won the World Series in Houston, uh, closed out that game, didn't start that game. What do you think about Let him? Let me jump having... in real quick, Jimmy. Sure. Because that, that 7.52 ERA in his last five road starts is a little bit misleading. You know, he had one really bad start, and <laughs> and that's why he has a seven. You know, I think there was that in Houston. He had he had one ugly, really ugly start where he just got bombed. Uh, but that's affecting that, and that's why. Again, when you look at the aggregate numbers, it's not going to give you a clear picture. Charlie Morton is not a seven point five two ERA pitcher. No, that's a great you know point. I mean? That's a great point and very, very important to state. And he's been so good against Oakland this year. And if you're going to play the Oakland A's, you want a righty on the mound. You don't want a lefty on the mound. Kevin Cash has done superb work with this Rays club. As the game goes on, like if this game is 2-2 after the sixth, you have to think the Rays got to be favored to win this game with how they use their bench, how they use their relief core. Is this a, a, what do you think about both offenses being so quiet of late? Does that lead you to move towards an under? It's hard to bet overs in MLB postseason. You know, we saw that last night. You know, all of a sudden, every at-bat gets magnified, every pitch gets magnified, and it's a whole different ballgame when it comes to putting runs across home plate. You know, each run is that much more difficult in the postseason. I don't do a lot, especially early on with overs. You know, when you talk about the transition from the regular season to the postseason, and the totals all go down, and they deserve to go down because, they, you know, there's no meaningless runs, and they don't leave a pitcher in for an extra batter. Um, so I don't play a lot of overs. It would be under or pass for me. Under or pass. G-Saw says, what do you think of me putting money on the Nats to win the World Series at 16-1? to 1? And then he says, don't you have to take a wild card when it comes to value? We know that you like the wild card in the AL. You didn't talk much about the wild card in the NL because you like the Dodgers so much. Do you think there's value at 16-1 to 1 with the Nats? Some value, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, if you bet, if you bet Washington over the summer, you got fifty to one or eighty to one or something. So um, you say, yeah, now there's sixteen to one is value. I guess. Um, I don't think the Nats are going to get past the Dodgers, so it's not a bet that I'm going to make. Uh, and it's not max value. Max value came when Washington was stuttering in June and July. Um, there's there some value there, maybe. You know, um, they'll be big. I mean, the Nats are going to be pretty big dogs if they get past. I don't know the. the There'll be dogs against L.A., <laughs> obviously. What's that? Do we have a series price on that? Uh, yeah, let me see if I got one here. Uh, I'll pull it up right now. i got the hockey futures up. I'll, I'll pull it up right now. Here we go, futures. 
up to win series. And here we go. Yes, Nationals are plus 200 yeah. to win the series. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so they're plus 200 here. They'll be dogs again if they get past the Dodgers. And then they'll be dogs again, assuming that they face the Astros or the Yankees in the World Series. So um, if you, if you, you know, take your two to one and pump it up again next round and pump it up again next round, I think you'll get comparable results. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to, to do what you want in any given series, as opposed to having to hold that 16 to one to wait again, it's, it's not a bad bet. The nationals are as live as any team. They got the pitching, you know, they have the starting pitching. Uh, they got the lineup. Uh, I mean, they, they have postseason experience. I mean, Washington is a team that can make some noise. Uh, but the time to bet them was two months ago. <laughs> so, uh, they're coming a little bit late to the party. Uh, I agree. And they, you know, they won 19 of their first 50 games. If you had the balls to do it, then you got a huge number. Do you, do, were you surprised that Michaelis is getting the start tomorrow over Flaherty? I'm not surprised by what St. Louis does. You know, I mean, that's what the St. Louis is a, is a heavily analytic organization and they will make their decisions based on what the computers say to make and the manager buys in. And so I know I'm not shocked. Um, and again, it's, I mean, that's, that's not a winner take all. <laughs> that's a series. So it's, it's a very different nuance than these uh, two wildcard games, uh, you know, last night and tonight. Not Flush Allen says G Sauce talking about the, our guy G Sauce who was wondering if the uh, the Nats were the look says he got him at fifty to one and rebetted at forty to one and Not Flush Allen says I will yeah. be attending church the next few weeks that's very exciting Dan <laughs> Kelly says this please remember Oakland Alameda Coliseum has some severe shadows at today's start time it's going to be sunny and the hitters will see the ball going through the shadows this is key. God, love having Dan Kelly back in the house. Yu Chang Yu says, I like Oakland's lineup a lot more. Can't see Tampa scoring. Black Road fading, fading St. Louis. Guru Sports Bet says, Corbin, will I agree? But he can't start more than two. Talking about Corbin being a big piece against the Dodgers. All right, there we go. Uh, and Jay Peach talking about uh, Mattress Mac, a legend in Houston. Yeah, uh, it's been uh, it's wild stuff. He did get three and a half million bet to uh, cover his... Uh, liability because everybody gets like the, the mattresses for free if the Astros win the World Series. Great story there. Let me talk about that for a second, Jimmy, sure. because that's, that's such a key issue. All right. When there's one person who is literally influencing the entire global betting markets, don't make no mistake about it. When someone's putting, you know, five million, how much did he put down? I mean, a million here and two million there. The guy's putting down multiple millions of dollars in a future market. That's enough to affect one person has affected the broader marketplace in Major League Baseball right now when it comes to who's going to win it all. And that means Astros futures are, oh, you know, you can't, <laughs> uh, the, the, the liability for Astros futures is such that if you haven't bet Houston already, it's difficult to bet Houston now. You've lost the best of it. And there may be some value on some other teams because this one guy has gone out and made all these huge bets. It's a unique situation where one person literally has influenced the global marketplace. It's happening right here. Yeah, it's a wild story. And the more attention we get to uh, sports gambling, the better. So I, uh, I love it. I love that it's happening. Uh, let's get into football. Teddy covers. We've been doing a lot of work. We had DJ Big Boss come on yesterday and give us his looks from the Mountain West. Out of curiosity, uh, I know that you locked in plays early in the week, and then around Wednesday is a huge time of study for you. Do you have more looks, or is this a spot where I should be pitching you what our cappers in the chat, what our cappers who join us on the show are liking? Oh, no, we got a whole short list right here for you, buddy. You know, Beautiful. Tuesday's uh, college football day. You know, um, week in, week out, uh, I spend my Tuesdays, you know, that's what I do. So at the end of Tuesday, I got a short list. I'm comfortable. I've gone through just about every game, at least somewhat. And, and I've gone through local papers on a lot. So uh, I'm happy to give you my takes. I'm happy to answer your takes, whatever you want, wherever you want to go, Jimmy. Beautiful. Uh, I'll go with you. It's all good. I love you it. Know, well, usually we say my takes for, for the Friday show when I'm, when I'm, this is what I locked in on and what, the, what's down on, but I, I'm happy to give you my short list right now, what I'm thinking about and considering. Um, stuff that I bet already, stuff that I'm thinking about betting, et cetera, et cetera. This works out perfectly. Absolutely perfect. Uh, Jay McGrath, first question. And you know what? I already, we already know this was, this was Teddy's first look of the week. So Jay McGrath says, can you please ask Teddy about Troy, Missouri over 65 and a half? It was your very first look that he gave us on the show. Are you still liking it? Yeah, I, I'm, we've seen some under money and it surprised me a little bit. Um, I think that there's some concerns in the market as to whether Troy's going to be able to score against this defense. And if they can't, 
uh, obviously, you know, Missouri will get theirs and the Tigers will cover and the game will stay under. Uh, but I think Troy's good enough offensively to move the ball, even against an SEC defense. And I see this game as being a really up-tempo affair. And as long as Missouri's interested, and I think they are, um, they should get into the 40s here, maybe more than that. I, I still like that over a fair bit, even though the markets have moved the other way. And I'm surprised by the market move the other way. I didn't see that one coming. I hear you. Uh, I absolutely hear you. Uh, but it's not being too big of a move, and, and it was the first look that you liked on your card. I get it. Uh, okay, let's yeah. talk about Drew Martin and his additions, and let's also talk about Big Boss. Big Boss like two spots very, very much. We've already talked about San Jose State quite a bit on this show, but his two looks in the Mountain West, where he does it best, are San Jose State and San Diego State. Both of those looks. I'm going to pull up the numbers here. Sorry, I got a little behind here with my... Where is it? Sorry. Oh, here we go. Uh, San Diego State. Let's start there because we've already talked quite a bit about San Jose State. One concern for people backing San Jose State is it looks like there's more money cut that's coming on San Jose State than New Mexico, and yet this line's gone from seven to six and a half. Is that enough to scare somebody off this bet? Okay, so like I don't know where this whole reverse line movement thing came from that recreational bettors seem to be very concerned with in the modern era, um, you can find better things to be concerned about than that, all right? <laughs> uh, because there, there, there's no relationship whatsoever between what the public thinks about a game and where the point spread goes. None whatsoever. You know, maybe the Super Bowl. In college football, the public's going to do what the public's going to do. The lines... And you know, college basketball, doesn't matter what sport it is. You know, the, the lines are going to be 100% focused on taking wise guy money. Because they know the public is going to give it back. You know, they're not afraid if the public has a big weekend. Because they'll be back in there next weekend making negative expectation wagers, and et cetera, et cetera. They don't want to give the wise guys money. Because the wise guys don't give it back the same way. So every line you see is based on sharp money, sharp action. Where's the, where's the you know, where are the big bets going to go? Where are the limit bets going to go? So when we see the public like one side and the sharp, and again, we're not talking about a huge move. It might have been one bet, you know, or one group. They said, all right, well, no, no, let's, uh, it can't be laying seven. You know, seven's our buy price. Um, and the markets move down and the consensus numbers are sky high. You say, oh, reverse line movement. It's a whole big deal. Oh, the wise guys love it. It's, you're, you're, you're chasing a ghost. You're chasing its shadows. Um, it's not a realistic way to try to win college football. The way to try to win college football is you break down these teams this year and say, which team can beat the other team? And by how much can they win? I'm a buy. And is, is that, are they focused? Is the energy there? What's the injury situation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the two games you're talking about, San Jose. And look, if I'm playing the San Jose game, I can only lay. Uh, so I, I'm not going to try to talk anyone out of San Jose. It's just a, such a, a change of roles for the Spartans uh that i'm not convinced that that's a team that knows how to win a game by more than a touchdown <laughs> you know what i mean uh can they close it out uh but I, I, that's the only way i could look in that game the other one i like the other side uh, I, i'm not ready to lay seven and a half uh, with san diego state on the road i don't trust that offense to put up uh, points in bunches and uh, all colorado state's done is hang tough you know they hung tough again last week against uh utah state the backup quarterback uh you know colin hill was obviously someone that came in uh, highly touted the backup was pretty good last week too uh, so I, I'm not overly concerned about the QB drop off there. Uh, the Aztecs coming off a bye, which is usually a good spy, uh, spot. You know, you want a team coming off a bye, especially, you know, you're talking about October buys. They're very meaningful uh, in the in the betting markets. Uh, and I think that's why we've seen the San Diego State money. And if you like the Aztecs, I hope you bet them before it got to seven and a half. There were, you know, six and a half and sevens available. Uh, but at the current price, I look at Colorado State plus before I look at San Diego State minus. I think the Rams have the potential to be live dogs this weekend. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, I like that breakdown, and it will probably keep me off. Okay, we have a lot of looks coming in, a lot of questions coming in. Feel free to keep hammering questions at us. Yesterday, Drew Martin gave us four looks. Four looks. So uh, if any of these jump out at you as something you'd like, let me know. He gave us Auburn. And minus three. He gave us the UMass FIU over. He gave us the Memphis Louisiana Monroe over. And he gave us Tulane minus three. Do any of those looks jump out at you as a real nice spot? I like the first three. I don't like the last one. Uh, you know, that Memphis over makes a ton of sense. I, I thought that number came low. 
And I and I'm I actually was investigating yesterday to figure out why it came low, uh, and I couldn't find anything. So that's one that stands out to me that uh, that interests me uh, a fair bit. I think uh, you know I, I think Memphis will get theirs, and Louisiana Monroe. We've seen enough offense out of them, uh, and, and it's a weird game. And that's my that, the, probably my biggest concern. Is like these aren't teams that play. Uh, you know, they played once two years ago. Uh, there's no rivalry there. It's not a, a conference affair. It's and and that sometimes worries me with the overs, like the Missouri Troy over. You know, uh, but uh, it's not a game I want an under. I'll put it that way. Um, we talked about the oh the FIU line. Yeah, the FIU UMass line. So remember, I was like this uh, when we were talking about this. I think it was on Monday, and I'm like, this is one of the bigger differentials I have between my powering number and, and the market number, and i got to figure it out why. Well, I went back and looked. <laughs> did a little work on it. Uh, FIU scored 63 on them last year. They scored 63 on them the year before. There's a speed differential there uh, that, that was not reflected in my powering number. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, and both those games flew over the total. Well, that's another one that makes a, a, a ton of sense. Auburn against Florida is one that I agree with. You know, look. This is just the eye test, okay? Throw out every stat you want to throw out. The eye test. We've watched these teams enough. Auburn's better than Florida, flat out. Both sides of the ball. Um, minus three is reasonable. Again, and Auburn, for a team that's 5-0 and against the spread, there's a handful of them. You know, SMU's got a pretty big betting bandwagon right now. You know, as every SMU game, there's been, oh, SMU. Auburn doesn't have that same level of betting bandwagon yet, despite their good ATS start. And again, I don't know the price. I'm not convinced I'm going to lay the field goal there. The price isn't necessarily right. I'm not getting max value with Auburn, but it's a really good team. They should dominate the line of scrimmage in this ball game. They're better than Florida, uh, and I think they'll beat them. So for whatever that's worth. The last one was the one that I disagreed with. What was it? Tulane. Uh, was it Tulane? Yeah. Was that the one he was talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to bet Tulane here. I mean, I, I, obviously, the, the, I like Army. You know, that's, that's another take that we talked about you know, on Monday morning. Um, Tulane probably has a little bit of a speed edge. That does concern me here. But when you're talking about uh, a team that's familiar with what the other team wants to run, Army knows what, what Willie Fritz wants to do here. And when you talk about this cadet squad, in a position where they're not – I mean – what we've seen enough from Army, they can hang with anybody. Um, I, 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 I'm not sold. I, I think it's a little bit more hype here of uh, Tulane than uh, than uh, than warranted, and I think this point spread is a little bit too high. So Army or pass for me. It's only one of Drews that I disagree with. I like that. That's great. Okay, we have tons of questions coming in, so I'm going to hit you with some questions for about five to ten minutes, and then we'll look at uh, what your short list is because we love hearing about that. Okay, Matt Randall, college football play for him: Arkansas State, Georgia State under. He says, as this total keeps rising, I love the under. Each game at Georgia State has gone under. Georgia State 0 5 versus Arkansas State. They will want to snap that. Georgia State will try to control the clock, pound it on the ground. Focus will be shutting down Bayless. Under, under, under. What do you think of Matt Randall's take? Uh, I wouldn't talk him out of it. It's not something I'm going to play because it's two teams that, that, that want to play at the opposite pace. You know, yeah, Georgia Southern wants to slow this game down. Uh, absolutely. Keep their Red Wolves offense off the field. The Red Wolves can score points in bunches, man. And. Because Georgia State's own, uh, because because they're zero and five, Georgia Southern is zero and five against uh, uh, Arkansas State. Doesn't mean that the, they're going to win this one. <laughs> you know, they might want to, uh, but I'm not convinced that they're going to be able to play it at their pace. So uh, it's it's not a total that uh, that I'm getting involved with. Um, good luck. We have a ton of questions coming in. Yes, I got you, Koji, but there's a few questions ahead of you. First off, Suze387, whom we love dearly in Hawaii, says, Hey, Jimmy, did you guys do SMU Tulsa already? I just had it up on my screen, and then I moved it off. Let me get to it right now. SMU Tulsa. SMU now ranked... 24th in the nation, uh, rotation number 353, 354, SMU opening at minus 13. It stayed there. For some reason, Bet Online's moved that to 11.5. I'll have to double check to make sure that's right because everywhere else is 13. Strange that they would move it to 11.5. The total is at 62, and it stayed there as well. Tulsa, SMU, Teddy covers. Yeah, and every, every once in a while, I mean, look, the SBR odds product is tremendous, and if you, guys, if you guys should be looking at that. All, I mean, it, literally, that's a window that should be open on your computer all day, every day. Uh, but every once in a while, you have a feed, a, a line feed uh, from one book that's short or uh, that's slow or something and it doesn't move. Uh, I, I wouldn't think that BOL uh, is a point and a half off market right now. It could be. Uh, but 
uh, I'm telling you that SBR odds page is is something that uh, you know it's not something to bookmark. It's something to have open all day, uh, and that gives you you know gets you thinking about the games, gets you seeing what's getting popped, and all of that. Um, so we just talked about SMU as being a pretty strong bandwagon team, um, and teams like the Mustangs they can. You know, what are they, 5-0 and ATS now? If you ask me how they're going to close out the season, you know, what do they got? They got uh, seven more regular season games. You know, 4-3 and three ATS, 3-4 three and four ATS. This isn't a team that's going to cover every point spread for, uh, throughout. You know, off a resounding, another resounding win last week. They're not a team I have a whole lot of interest in stepping in front of. And Tulsa is not good enough offensively to trade points with SMU. But Tulsa's defense is pretty good. I mean, good enough that I'm like, all right, I'm not going to lay this with SMU this week. Good. Um, I don't know that Tulsa's defense is built to shut down uh, SMU. I don't know if they can stop five wides with speed, you know. Uh, but I've seen Tulsa's defense a couple of times already this season where they've impressed. Even the Oklahoma State game, they impressed me, you know, in the backfield, uh, which you're not expecting. So it's not like SMU's faced a ton of good defenses yet. If you've been riding SMU, they're a team you ride. You ride them till they die. But if you're talking about jumping on and die, meaning fail to cover a point spread, not actually die, <laughs> not the death of the SMU program. Uh, but, you know, you, you ride them until you say, all right, the market conditions are such that I no longer want to ride this team. But to jump on, one of the things, again, it's just like with all, you know, you, you don't want to jump on a, a, a team, in my opinion, after they've won and covered their first five games and everyone's already paying attention to them. You want those under-the-radar teams that nobody's paying attention to. So I can understand the SMU bet. I wouldn't talk you out of it. It's not going to make my card. It's not even close. Interesting breakdown. Love it. We have rotation number 349, 350, California, Oregon. Our guy, Bookie Lover Q, liking Cal plus the points. And then people in the chat not agreeing. Some agreeing. Guru says Cal put all their eggs in one basket with their quarterback situation. I've seen the wide receiver throw the ball better than this guy. Black Rogue says Cal was the right side last week. And then our Mally Mal says fade Cal. Cal are frauds. What do you think of Cal plus the points? So uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating game. Uh, it really is. Uh, I want to see one. Uh, there was something I, was, I wanted to put. Oh, yeah, 42. That's what Cal gave up to Oregon last year. And it was the most points they gave up all year. It was really the, the, their defense had the most problems with Oregon than they had with anybody. Um, 42-24 last year was, uh, I believe, the final score. Uh, Oregon winning and covering. Um, Cal's backup quarterback, what's his name? Modesto? I'm spacing on his name right now. Anyhow, the guy's a stiff. Uh, <laughs> uh, we saw last week after Garbers got hurt how the coaching staff for Cal adjusted the game plan. We saw them not trusting him. And then when he had to throw, we saw why they didn't trust him. You know, he's not a QB that I trust to do anything. And I don't trust Cal's defense to shut down Oregon. If Oregon gets rolling here, this is going to get real ugly for the Bears. Um, for me, it's ducks or pass, even in this inflated point spread range. Look at the total. The total is 46 in an Oregon game. Oregon might get there by themselves. Um, ducks. Wow. Okay, so do you think that then the over is in play? I don't trust Cal to score. So I think that of the two, if I have a choice between side or total, I take the side because I think Oregon, you know, Oregon will get in the 20s. <laughs> you know, they'll get there. Uh, you know, maybe in the 30s. You know, they got in the 40s last year against Cal. Um, and I don't know that Cal, you know, points are going to be hard to come by for the Cal Bears moving forward. Koji Kamura, our guy Koji Kamura wants to know about this spot here with uh, rotation number 367, 368, Western Michigan, Toledo. Toledo opening up at minus four, being a big move towards Western Michigan. Three points. So Western uh, Toledo just a one point favorite at Pinnacle. And he says, Can you ask Toledo, or can you ask Teddy about Toledo? I've liked what I've seen, and I don't get the line movement. There's a lot of respect for Western Michigan in the, in the betting markets. Uh, we saw Western Michigan, a little bit of Western Michigan money last week, and that was a misleading final score against Central. You know, Western was in control of that game, and their offensive line was the dominant unit on the field. It really was. Central Michigan strong up front. You know, that's a strange. Yeah, they held Miami to 17 the previous week, and were in the backfield on play after play after play, and that didn't happen against Western. And the announcers watching the broadcast were like, Western Michigan's offensive line is clearly better than Miami, Florida's offensive line. Uh, and that, I mean, 
So misleading final score. I thought Western showed really well for themselves last week, and and uh, I, I would not argue with them uh, uh, as a dog at Toledo. Let's go over to this Rutgers Maryland spot. I don't have the oh here we go uh, three twenty nine three thirty. This total opened up at fifty four, and it's all over the place. Fifty five and a half, fifty six. There's a fifty seven at Bet three sixty five and Bookmaker. The icon likes this over in Rutgers Maryland. What do you think? I have no idea what to do with the total. Um, I, I, I really don't. Um, Rutgers is not a good offensive team, and everyone knows that, obviously. Rutgers has a couple of playmakers. You know, uh, Bashir, Blackshear, the, the running back. You know, they have a couple guys who, when they get the ball in space, can take it to the house, even against a, a defense like Maryland. But this team moving the ball steadily down the field for 80 yards into the end zone doesn't happen a whole lot. You know, that's not the way the Scarlet Knights are built. Their offensive line is weak. Um, so, the, But they do have a handful of skill. I mean, uh, again, a little bit of skill and talent that, that can score against Maryland. But I, I, I don't know what to do with the Terps right here. You know, this is a team the first two weeks of the season. You're like, wow, you know, maybe Maryland is real. And in the last two weeks, you know, the, the last two games, you know, they lose to Temple and then have the ultimate no-show against Penn State. Um, I don't know how they bounce back from that. Uh, you know, early in the season, teams tend to bounce back better. But – Teams that get their doors blown off aren't teams I'm excited about asking them to do a whole lot the next week, uh, let alone laying a couple touchdowns, let alone scoring points, let alone getting stops. So it, it's not a game where I have a strong opinion on the total. Sidewise, you know, Rutgers, just, their coach just got fired. They're just coming off the worst game you could ever possibly have. Uh, I don't trust Maryland at this point, spread range. If I'm playing the game, it'll be on Rutgers plus the points as opposed to the uh, total in this one. Party Hardy capping info says, I think Minnesota laying 14 points to Illinois is too many. 357, 358 rotation number. They're at 14. There's a 13 and a half at Bookmaker. This total opened at 60. It's dropped to 57 and a half at Pinnacle, 58 at the other books. Is Minnesota laying 14 points to Illinois too many? Probably. Maybe. Uh, Look, let's put it this way. I'm not laying with the Gophers this week. No way. And Illinois gave them a game last year. Um... We gave him a pretty good game last year, if I uh, memory serves correctly. <laughs> Did they beat him? Or was it? Uh, shoot, now I'm spacing on it. Let me uh, let me just look it up real quick. I know that it was a battle uh, a year ago. I Illinois with an I, H I. What the heck was it? Uh, the Minnesota. Yeah, they beat him by uh, the 24 last year. I, I knew there was something in that because this is one that I did some work on uh, yesterday. And think and the the thought process was. Can I lay with Minnesota? And at the end of the day, I'm like, no, I'm not laying with Minnesota. You know, the, the Gophers, every game that they've played so far this season has been a one-possession game. All right? And I do like this Minnesota team a fair bit. I think that they're – I don't want to lay 14 with them, though, against, you know, Illinois coming off a bye. And Illinois – Illinois's got – they're like Rutgers. You know, the offense isn't going to march up and down the field, but they do have a handful of playmakers you can get in the end zone. Um, I'm not betting on Lovey. <laughs> you know, I just, I just don't do it. I just don't do it. But – uh, if I had to play the game, uh, you know, again, my initial lean was Minnesota. Not laying, I'm like, no, it is too high. Uh, so if I had to play the game, I could only take Illinois, but I'm not going to play the game. Chip Plylar asking about rotation number 359, 360, Rice, UAB. UAB opening at minus 10. Now nine and a halfs or nines on the board. Total open at 43 and a half. It's 42 or 41 and a half at some books. It's up to 44 and a half at others. So confusion on the total. Teddy covers Rice, UAB. So this is a fascinating game. It, it really is. Okay. So Rice is starting to cover some point spreads. They're keeping everything low scoring. They're feisty. Their defense is feisty. Their offense is the, I mean, as pedestrian as it gets. This team is not uh, likely to put up points in bunches. UAB last week, we remember, we talked about it last week, saying coming into the season, UAB was straight fade for me. You know, a team are absolutely looking to bet against. And they faced this ridiculously easy early schedule. That left them overvalued moving forward. I'm like, I can't lay with UAB last week. And again, last week was a turnover game. It wasn't like UAB got blown off the field. It wasn't a a well-played game. But now the markets are really crashing on UAB, you know? (laughs) I mean, we said, all right, the markets are way. It's going to come. There's going to come a time. They're going to bet against the Blazers. Um, I think it's a little cheap now. And UAB's uh, been a one-way team for me this year. All I wanted to do was bet against UAB. Um, Not in this game. Not in this point spread range. Uh, The markets have adjusted and perhaps over-adjusted. Uh, in this one, it'd be Blazers or pass uh, for me. And again, I don't know how Rice scores. Um, UAB is not a team I'm, I like playing a whole lot of honors with. So total wise, 
uh, I'm not going to get to the window. Our gas station sushi, great capper, lives in Vegas, wants to know what you think about Kent State here. Rotation number 333, 334, Kent State, Wisconsin. Wisconsin opening up as 36 and a half point favorites, and they still are there at Pinnacle 36 and some other books. Total open at 57 and a half, now 59 and a half. He likes Kent State here. He thinks there might be too many points. What do you think? So it's a game that I've done uh, that I'm not going to do anything with. And in general, when you start getting in the five plus touchdown range, I don't do a lot with that in college football. I don't want the dogs in general because you know what happens with a dog like Kent in this game? The only thing you're worried about the whole game is tick, 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 tick. Because Kent's not going to do anything. You know, maybe they get a touchdown here, a touchdown there. Maybe they get, you know, uh, Kent's team total is going to be under 14 uh, in this contest. And Wisconsin's going to hand the ball off. And and the you know the second half of the game if if Wisconsin's up twenty one you're like uh, you know it's just a nail biter I mean, what you know every time Wisconsin is, has the ball they're gonna uh, be you know, six yards and eight yards and second and two and oh no we just broke off another one uh, and and you're you know you're living that game on pins and needles uh, because the underdog can't compete. Um, Kent can't compete with Wisconsin if Wisconsin is isn't interested or is flat or whatever. Kent can hang hang around, um, but if Wisconsin's interested in any way, Kent you know they'll score on every possession, and, and Kent has no chance to match them. So these aren't games I tend to I tend to bet unless I know the favorite's not interested. And Wisconsin, it's not, it's not a great Wisconsin spot, you know, off two pretty big games, um, and they got something big. They got something next week as well. Sparty, uh, so let me just look that up real quick. Uh, oh, Sparty. Yeah, uh, they got Sparty next week, and that's a big game too. So it's the type of game that one would think Wisconsin's going to try, you know, get them up 28 nothing at halftime and uh, let's get all the scrubs in. Uh, but then then you're sweating the whole second half anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, conceptually, you're probably supposed to take Kent State here. Uh, Kent State's a pretty bad team. I don't want my money on them. And he's coming off a max bet on Connecticut that cast last week due to circumstances, and that's what he's looking for here I'm assuming we have, he's also wondering about Marshall. We've had a couple of people ask about this Marshall middle Tennessee spot. Marshall opening up at seven point favorites. Now four point favorites. This total is stuck at 57 and pinnacle, although it has moved to 56 or 55 and a half in other books. Marshall middle Tennessee, Teddy. It's on the short list. Uh, I think Marshall's cheap here. And I, what happened to that team? I mean, it's been like, you know, they started, they, they opened up the season and looked really good. And they had the game against Boise that wasn't pretty, you know, uh, but the defense was there. And then it's like Marshall hasn't – there's no betting market support. There's no groundswell support for them. They haven't lived up to expectations. And this is a team they're supposed to be able to go in and, and, and beat. Uh, I think they're a lot better than middle uh, defensively. Uh, and Marshall's the only way I would look in that ball game. Uh, I think they're absolutely worth a look. And they'll be one of the uh, games that I'll be researching today. Well, let's talk about that short list. Uh, so I've been writing down each day what you're liking, what you're thinking about. And uh, I love it. This is very, very enjoyable for me. So let's hear Teddy's short list here on Wednesday, October 2nd. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to plow through a bunch of games, uh, you know, because they're all on here. Uh, number 324, Army Plus, I'm interested in. Number 326, Duke Minus is one that has stood out to me. I think Duke might be a team to ride. Uh, I will most assuredly, we already talked about Central Michigan. Uh, I'll be on Central. We've already seen six and a half, so I'm still waiting for a seven. I don't know that I'm going to get one. Uh, that's game betting number 336, Central Michigan. Um, I'm tempted to bet against Virginia Tech again. Uh, the Hurricanes are on my short list. Game number 338, Miami minus. We talked about uh, Missouri Troy over already. Uh, at minus three, I'll get to Michigan. Uh, I'm going to get there. Uh, game number 356. We haven't seen the threes yet. I think we will. Uh, Air Force is one that we talked about already earlier in the week. Uh, I like the Air Force as a short road chalk. I'm glad I locked in on that one early. That one's already up to three and a half. Ohio U is one that I'm interested in. My power rate number came out way higher than that. Uh, I had Ohio U faced uh, favored more than a touchdown against Buffalo. So uh, that's one that interests me. Iowa State is on the short list. Betting number 374. Uh, um it's it's the right spot and the right opponent. I think Iowa State's defense is a big week uh, this week. Marshall, we just talked about. Auburn, we talked about already on the show. Marshall betting number 377. Auburn betting number 375. We talked about that Memphis ULM over. That's on the short list, 389, 390. And you guys will hate this one. Uh, Sparty first half. Michigan State. If I'm playing Michigan State, it will only be a first half play. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to play it. But 
you know, as we saw last, Michigan State's defense is capable of getting stops against anybody. Uh, I worry about them wearing down like they did last. Again, last year that game was nine to six into the fourth quarter, final twenty six to six. Wouldn't shock me if something like that happened this year as well. If I'm playing Michigan State, it'll only be first half. Um, there you go. There you have it. Um, yeah. I love it. I that, love that short there's list. There's a short list for you. There's I a Wednesday it. list. I was uh, feverishly writing things down. Mississippi Kid says, love Michigan minus three. They win by two TDs. Guru Sports says, I'm doing the same thing with Michigan. I think they roll Iowa. Love it. Love it. And Black Rogue liking that first half says, I like that look, Teddy. Full game. They won't cover Going to copy and paste Anders Larson's looks. All right, so we've heard Teddy's short list on Wednesday. You have to come join us. I'm betting with the bag tomorrow morning and Friday morning to see what ends up making the cut and what he goes to the window with. Teddy covers what a treat it is to roll with you each and every day here at Betting with the Bag. All you guys watching, low baggers everywhere, please follow Teddy Covers on Twitter. He's a very exciting follow, does a lot, very active on Twitter, and gets you that NCAA football insights that you so desperately, that we so desperately need. Teddy Covers, can you remind everybody what your Twitter, Twitter handle is? And uh, any last words for these great cappers in the chat? So every day, I want to. I keep on forgetting to ask you at the top of the show. I got tomorrow. I'm finding out why they call you Jimmy the Bag. That's <laughs> I, I need to know the nickname, dude. I gotta know. You know, Teddy Covers was easy. I started a site. It was called Who Covers, and they're like, "Oh, Teddy Covers." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a nickname. I, I and it was a nickname that I didn't even give myself. Someone else gave it to me, and I'm like, "That's a good nickname," and it caught. But Jimmy the Bag, I don't know where you got it from. If you want to follow me on Twitter? It's real simple. Teddy at Teddy underscore Covers. Uh, getting a ton of follows every day. Really appreciate. Uh, all the support from the low baggers out there. And again, like Jimmy says, you know, I'm not, I don't tweet constantly. I, I'll retweet a lot of stuff, but my goal is always information. You know, I'm, I'm not going to treat you with, uh, <laughs> uh, one thing I don't do is go on these crazy tweet storms when I'm pissed off at something. Uh, you know, that's when I go outside and scream at the, <laughs> scream at the clouds. Uh, but I will try to give you as much info as I possibly can, uh, especially over the weekends when I know everyone is in front of their TV. So at Teddy underscore covers, and uh, Jimmy, we'll do it again tomorrow. I look forward to it, buddy. I can't wait. I can't wait. NHL is back. We got playoff baseball, NCAA football, and soon NBA and NCAA base, uh, basketball, where we eat. So I love it. Thank you so much for joining us, Teddy. Have yourself a wonderful Wednesday. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, my friend.